All right, we talked about conditions for doing uh, one prop and using one prop sampling distributions. Think about how a sampling distribution is made first off. Um, you know, we make sampling distributions in class, and I have a, a bucket of beads. Some of them are red, some are white. We take handfuls and we try to calculate. The, you know, we, we take everybody calculates the p hat, the proportion of successes in their samples, and we make a distribution up on the board of all the p hats, and we see it's normal ish, yada yada yada, da 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 da. So there are some conditions. The, um, in order to use the normal model. Now these are conditions in order to use the processes that we use for this course, to use you know, the, the Z model and the normal model. We can, if, if things don't meet all this, there are other things you can do, other statistical you know, uh, um, tests and stuff you can do, but it's just beyond the scope of this course. So it's not like, you know, like a couple of these people are like, well, I don't want to have a sample too big. It's, not, it's, it's okay to have more than 10%, but you're just not going to use a normal model then. You're going to use a different model. Um, but let's talk about the three things, independent and random. Um, basically, this comes about because these are based on Bernoulli, based on Bernoulli trials um, for the proportions. We want to make sure that they're independent from each other. We don't want one, we don't want someone to say, you know, I like cheese, and the next person hears them, and they're like, ugh, so do what? We don't want to influence each other, and we just, so we assume that, that this person is, is independent from this one, so whatever this person is, it doesn't matter what the next person says, whether they like cheese or not, they're totally independent, and here's why. You need the, because these are Bernoulli trials, you need the, the probability of them saying, yes, I like cheese, for every single person that comes through to be the same. So they need to be random, randomness guarantees that, but they need to be independent. So you don't want people like, hearing each other whether or not they like cheese, so make sure you be careful how you ask people those things. But they should be independent from each other because in order to be Bernoulli, they need to have a constant probability of success. Everybody has the same equal probability of being of liking cheese and random person and then um, and make sure that they're independent from each other. We want random. Why do we need randomness? Um, part of it because of this independence thing, but randomness, the reason why we need it to be random because randomness is what we know about. The whole, the whole thing that we, we studied in probability was randomness. So we know how p hats fall randomly. We only know how they fall randomly. We don't know how they fall non-randomly. Our normal model is based on random samples of size n. I don't know about what model I use for non-random or convenient samples of size n. So since we study randomness, probability, and we know a lot about how things happen randomly, even though we can't make a prediction about one thing happening randomly, we know about how things happen randomly in the long run, sort of. Uh, we need to make sure that our sample is also random, because remember, all of that pile of p-hats that we're going to have, all of those p-hats, that's these p-hats are random p-hats. So when we're trying to find out what's the likelihood of getting this p-hat randomly, we better make sure that, that this p-hat was gathered randomly. NP and NQ have to be greater than 10. Well, you need your sample size to be large enough, because think about if your sample size was small. Let's suppose your sample size was three, um, and you knew that about, let's say, I don't know, you get three people that say 80% of people, you know, like cheese. That's the example. 80% like cheese. And I take samples of size three. Well, what's the distribution of samples of size three going to look like? Well, the problem with samples of size three, think about there's only there's not many options of the number who like cheese. Either zero out of three will like cheese, one out of three will like cheese, two out of three will like cheese, or three out of three will like cheese. And if 80% like cheese, then it's probably going to be somewhere between here, which is about 60% and 100%. So when I get the, the sampling distribution, will look like this. Here's 0%. Here's 100%. And I take a random sample. Oh, none of these people. Oh, there's, there's my P hat. There's one third, two thirds. Here's another P hat. P, most of my P hats will be here. So I'll end up having a sampling distribution that looks like this. Can you see that that's not normal-ish? So you need a lot larger sample because, well, it gives you a bunch of, it, it kind of fills in that normal model, but it's, it's not, small samples aren't going to give you a nice normal-ish curve. You need a large enough sample. So you need to push that thing. This is some like weird skewed distribution. You need more and more and more in order to, to, to get up there and get that thing normal-ish so we can use z-scores in a normal model. And the last one here, you need less than 10% of the population. Now, if you have 
have more than 10% of the population, there are statistics that you can, there, there are things you can do, but not in this course. So we only know how to use the normal model. When you have more than 10%, what ends up happening, it affects the, the Bernoulli-esque thing, or, or it's, it's like this. When, suppose I, I, I have uh, these uh, green, uh, green golf balls, uh, one, two, three, uh, these are green, and four, five, and these are red. Um, and I reach in and I grab a ball and it's green, okay? The ball's green. And I put it back in. And we know the probability of the first ball being green is three out of five. There's a 60, one, two, three out of five. There's a 60% chance of it being green, right? We know that. And if I put it back in and I shake it up and I pull it out, the probability of the next ball being green is 60% and I put it back in. But suppose I took that green ball out. There was the two and it comes over here, two. Now, the next ball I grab, what's the probability of the next ball being green? It's, well, it's not 60% anymore. There's only two green ball left. So what happens is I took, I, took, I took kind of a big chunk of the population out of there. I took more than 10% out of there. And when you take more than 10% out of the population, the probability of the next thing having this quality might change a little bit depending on what it is you took out. Now suppose I had a lot more balls here. Suppose I had, you know, uh, 50, or suppose I had 100, and I had, you know, one through, what would I have, what, one, two, three? So I had one through 60 were labeled, uh, you know, one through 60 were one thing, and, two, and I only take a small part out. Even though removing that one ball changed the probability, so suppose I have 100 balls, I take one green out, and I put it in my pocket, I reach in, the probability of the next one being green is gonna be pretty close. But what happens is when you start taking more than 10% of the population, it's possible that you've altered the probability of the next person liking cheese because maybe you grab so many people that don't like cheese that almost everybody that's left in the population does like cheese. And then you don't have Bernoulli trials anymore because in order to have Bernoulli trials, the probability has to remain the same. Okay, you need a very large population. Hopefully that makes sense to you. But these are what you need. Make sure it's random, you generally assume independence, check NP and NQ, make sure they're greater than 10, and don't just say NP, NQ greater than 10, you won't get problem, you won't get credit on your test. You have to write why you think it's independent, it states random, you actually have to do this, 0.8 times 50 equals 40, 0.2 times 50 equals 10. Greater than 10 or equal, okay to proceed. You have to show the calculation. So if your sample size is 50, right, you also have to say, okay, 50 times um, 10 is about 500. So you have to say that the population is most likely bigger, like, you know, there's more than 500 students at the school, or there's more than whatever. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and that's that. Those are the conditions. See ya.